Hey guys, my name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel and happy Friday. Today we're back for another episode of the Inner Sea Region, a five minute tour. Last week we talked about the Mwangi Expanse. Today we're just going to take a step over and talk about Sargava. Before we get down to that though, we gotta say that this episode of the Inner Sea Region of 5 Minute Tour was brought to you in part by the Inn of Planar Crossroads. We do a little chat with those guys once a week and pretty much all the time that one hour chat turns into like three hours of us just nerding together and somewhere in the interim I'm starting to rope a bunch of them over to our Pathfinder stream. Looks like we're gonna at least double part party size, which I am super stoked for. If you guys like watching Pathfinder streams, the link to episode one of ours is right here. Our quality is somewhat lackluster in the beginning, however, I promise we get our act together as we move forward. And if you guys want to see more stuff like that, better interfaces, better quality video and audio recording, patronage of this channel as well as really any channel you want to see in 2017, do more exciting things is the number one way to do it. But enough about that. Let's talk about Sargava. Sargava was part of the Mwangi Expanse until 4138 AR, when the region was settled by Chelish colonists who imposed their rule upon the native population. Pop quiz, kids. In what year did Eridan, the patron god of all of humanity, and specifically Cheliacs, die? That's right. 4606 AR. And when Aridin dies, Chaliax, as we've discussed, descends into three decades of civil war, eventually turning to devil worship, but that's neither here nor there. When Chaliax falls apart, Sargava breaks off into its own independent country. In 4643 AR, House Thrun sends a fleet to try to reclaim Sargava, but that fleet is sunk in Desperation Bay by the Pirates of the Shackles. A second fleet comes down in 4660 AR, they fare a little better, and so far Sargava has managed to cling on to its fragile bit of independence at the high, high cost of paying the Pirates of the Shackles for their protection. Sargava's population consists mainly of Mwangi tribesmen ruled over by the colonists from Cheliax. The colony's treasury stands pretty much empty paying pirates for protection, say that ten times fast, and there have been several revolts by the natives in the region. Of all the native tribes plaguing the colonists, the worst among them is the Bandu. These guys are slavers, and they regularly raid nearby tribes and villages up to and including the colonists for captives. Most of these captives they'll sell to other tribes, but a significant percentage of the captives are retained for sacrifice to the Bandu's patrons demons which they refer to as nature spirits. With the arrival of the Chalaxians, the Bandu have concluded that the lighter-skinned foreigners are emissaries of the northern gods and, as such, are more valuable as sacrifices to their gods. Consequently, the Bandu have staged numerous raids on colonial Sargavan settlements over the years, slaughtering dozens of colonists and carrying off dozens more as sacrifices. The Sargavans in turn have mounted military actions against these guys several times, each time thinking they've finally put an end to the threat, driving the Bandu off into the hills, but each time the Bandu eventually return. Sargava is one of the most wild and untamed places one can go on Galerion, and it harkens back to an age of exploration on planet Earth. Think the British colonizing South Africa, the Spanish arriving in Mesoamerica or the Caribbean, where people of a culture radically different then the culture around them arrive and settle. The British had to deal with hostile tribes such as the Zulu, the conquistadors had to deal with the Aztecs, the Chalish colonists still to this day have to deal with tribal uprisings in addition to, oh, you know, angry monkey gods, dinosaurs, and pretty much everything in between that we can expect to find in a fantasy jungle world. Sargava is also a really good jumping off point for any player who would consider a life of piracy. The Pirates of the Shackles make much of their revenue protecting the Sargavan colonists, and who's to say they don't Shanghai a player or two? Oh, wait a minute, I'm pretty sure that's actually the beginning of the plot of Skull and Shackles. I'm not entirely for sure because I've never read it, but you get the idea. If you've got a pirate adventure or an aquatic adventure in your back pocket and you really want to use it, have them start in Sargava. Have it be nice and normal and quiet, and then one day, bam, you're on a pirate ship. So what do you guys think of the little Avastani outpost that is Sargava? Is this some place you might bring a party? Might you have a character with a backstory from Sargava? Are you like me in the fact that we wish for a black and white version of Mesoamerican gods, 
Aztec warriors, things like that, and just cling to Sargava because at the moment, mixing Mesoamerican and African cultures together is the best we have. If so, throw it in the comments. We'll keep the conversation going. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. The next episode of the 5-Minute Tour drops next Friday.